Making grooves? Cool. Making offbeat grooves? That might even be cooler. Let's get into it right here, right now. <laughs> Hey, what's up? I'm in the little kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe, hit that bell because you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. You'll be kept in the loop and you won't miss out on anything. I really have to go and check the list. It's uh, Mario Gottbout, it's Spazu, Lee Simpson, it's Guido Glormo Jeep, David Lee Atkinson, Andrew McWalters, Bruno Ferreira, George Coles, and we have Adam, and we got Booty Case. Oh heavens, I mean, it's really going crazy on Patreon. And I'll tell you what, it's not even going crazy on Patreon. There, it's even the Discord that I got connected to it. So when you join up, it means you help support this channel, you help me support creating better content for you and at the same time i'm trying to just do a few projects i'm working on an album that i would like a sci-fi sort of like graphic backdrop for it and also i'm working on a mixer because i do think that there's a gap in between what a club mixer is and what a studio mixer is especially for us um live dollars artists you know every Life set pretty much sound different. Joining uh, the Patreon uh, vibe means you're actually helping support me getting my goals, but also we're building a community, man, and it's really cool. I was talking to the guys, uh, um, uh, via Discord, which is a really cool feature. So you get in touch with each other, you get in touch, and I get a lot of nice ideas for the video. So it's a cool uh, thing to just uh, get out there, and uh, it's all really cool. That's patreoncom kitchen building an offbeat groove. I mean, when you follow this channel, you know all about me trying to just like place notes strategically, but there's a few things that you need to take care of as well. Um, a thing that came up on my Patreon was uh, uh, syncopation and intonation. And you know, if I can get into that. Syncopation means that we are actually going to look at playing stuff off the grid. You know, when everything is on the grid, like one, two, three, four, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, McDonald hat, uh, you know that everything's going to be stuck on the grid. But if you got things like <coughs> fairy superstitions, you know, those things are off beat. So, and an off beat kind of syncopated groove is more pleasing for the crowd to listen to. They will get into the groove much easier because it's not harder to follow, but more pleasing, you know? I mean, if you got stuff stuck on the beat, then obviously it's very easy to follow. So folk music or line dancing, everything stuck on the one, very easy to follow. Even if you don't, don't have a much developed sense of rhythm, it's easy to follow that kind of groove. Us dollars cats, however, we love to just work and think outside of the box with polyrhythms, polymeter, and all that kind of stuff. So syncopated drums, syncopated bass, lines those things are actually a good weapon in order for you to just really come up with an original groove now intonation has got to do with how accurate the notes are pitched and it works better with guitars obviously because the higher you play up the fretboard the more your fingers are going to fluctuate or if you play fast solos you might not actually hit that correct note it's on a piano much easier to just like play straight notes and straight chords but intonation might mean you can lean a little bit with the note accuracy or the pitch accuracy i should say now obviously this is something that i can do with my model d because i can tune the oscillators now by offsetting a few of them you'll also get a richness in the notes so intonation is something we're going to look at today as well so let's uh, head over to the live set and let's see if we can stick our groove where our mouth is shall we intonation syncopation two things very important for you to add as a weapon in inside the live set what's in the box akai mpc live wired up location launch control which means i'm taking care of the levels right here the levels are being midi mapped over here so if i do stuff with the faders here's certain things are going to happen midi cable we don't need it get out of here all right tetra right over here uh multi-clock right over here audio things micro monster um for arpeggios and stuff like that that's why i use it then obviously i've got the model d for notes which we're going to use the um the um, we're going to use this for for the for the notes for the notes that we're going to detune slightly you know intonation that's what i was going to say intonation model d 
uh, mini tower. That's what we've got right here by Moog. The acid box not being used today, but you know, I got certain things coming out of the Octatrack into the acid box so you can actually switch this. Any Dawless character needs big knobs in his life. This is an amazing, amazing machine. Now, uh, the groove that I'm gonna be working with today is this. And I will go into quick mute mode and just turn off certain things. The way things are wired up, it's probably another video, so I'll, uh, I'll not get into the nitty gritty of how I wired up all these things today. Uh, if you guys are interested, I can, will do a separate video on that. But today it's all about um, intonation, syncopation. Did I hit the mic? I think I did. Okay, so on the first four tracks in the octa track, octa meaning eight, it means that I've got audio samples or stuff that I can manipulate in this um, uh, sampler slash sequencer. Why am I using both? They, the Akai has got different things in its memory. So this is ma mainly my drum computer. Uh, as I stick my samples in here and I use ear candy, like that stuff that you hear on the first of the bar. One, two, three, four. Here, so it's a crash. And then there's a little bit of ah, a little Atmos going on right there. And then the Octatrack I use for samples on top that I can manipulate. In this sense, when it comes to syncopation, us human beings focus on the one and the three of the bars. So if I'm gonna take out the stereo Akai, uh, stereo output, where all the drums are coming from, except the kick, as you can hear, we are very much focused on the one and the three of the bar. So it's like, we will, we will rock you. Self-explanatory. So we, boom, clap, boom, clap. Any rock track is basically uh, a kick and a snare and a kick and a snare. But for dance music, obviously, we've got our kicks laid out throughout the whole spectrum. But this is the sparse thing, yeah? So like, oh, McDonald had a farm. Hia, hia, ho. That's all on the one. You understand? When it comes to syncopation, though, it means you're actually going to place notes somewhere else in the groove to break up this thing. Now, making electronic music, obviously, is presenting you with a problem. The problem being, this thing is obviously sparse. And this by itself, I don't know how patient you are, but after five minutes of just listening to this, hmm, probably not the best idea. So, obviously, you need to add some rhythmical elements in to your groove to have that groove move forward or go in a different direction or not give you the sense you're actually listening to the same thing all the time. So the kick being the biggest thing in the room to just steer your feet and your brain into a certain direction. Now the groove that's here. We've got something that's migrating over the course of four bars, yeah? So I got the So, and every time when the loop returns, you'll hear that ear candy start here. That means that if I'm making a groove like this in a club, I know where I am in terms of the beat. If I would take it out, and obviously I got lost in a, where my sequences are, and you would like to start stuff on the first or the eighth or whatever, you know, in the, in the bar. You don't want to end up standing dancing there on the dance floor and either you have a lag too much, too many, or uh, you know, it's like either you are falling into the right, uh, the wrong groove. Okay, having said that though, then I've got a few things that I stick into my B category of ingredients. I, I link my tracks up into three categories. I've got the A section of it, my groove, my clap, my uh, hats, my kick, obviously. Those are the things you need in order for the track to stand out. So if I'm talking about ABC in terms of importance, you have to understand like if it's a B um, category, if you don't turn it on, nothing's really happening. But if you turn off the kick, and you expect people to dance to this. Again, if this is going to take five minutes, people are actually going to leave the dance floor. So this thing needs to play a category. And then the three is the ear candy. That's there to dress my track up a little bit, you know, get stuff going. All right, so now, on the octa track, apart from the stuff that's already playing here in the Akai, I've got a few things. There's a vocal sample that I stick in the beat because vocals, tend to pick your mind a little bit more, you you recognize another person speaking immediately. If it's a synthesizer, it's an artificial sound source, but a vocal, it's much more like us humans, so. So 
So that's on track three of the octa track. That so again, two things are happening. Now syncopation. This is a very interesting one because there's a small hole in between this vocal where I think, hmm, maybe I can stick something of a groove in there to have a question and answer thing balanced out. So here's a hole. So in between those um, grooves, I will try and stick something else. I've got this on track one, which is a sample that I'm going to add now. So instead of quick mute mode, I'll go over to chromatic mode. Let's record that, shall we? There you go. Now the trick is in the length of the sequence. I did something towards the end of the bar, which I think I'm going to take out. So I'll go over there, it's here. Let's take it out. Let's, let's have this thing play sparsely. Yeah. Now, everything that I've played so far on the drums, did that go well? Yeah, that go well. Okay, everything that I've played on the drums is in a four bar sequence. One, two, three, bam, bam, boom, two, three, four, two, three, four. But this, however, is chopping my beat up in half so it will speed up the track. Doesn't speed up the track, my BPM is still 125, but still it'll migrate your feeling into, oh, this track is actually moving. One, two, one. But now we're gonna go like one, one, one. One. So on every stamp on the floor, something's happening. So this now is dividing your brain into, okay, where is this going? Now, that's how I use the syncopation a little bit in my music. And then there's another vocal bit that goes ba, 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 ba. So instead of on the one bit, ba, it's on the second beat. So now it's a thing that you're dancing to, but in the grand scheme of things, it's something to. So that's, that's, that's the sound. Now on track four, I've got a piano sample. So I'll go into chromatic mode now, leaving quick mute mode here. Now, if I was to stick something on the first of the bar, obviously, it'll be like... Which is nice, but let's see if we can add a little bit more groove to this already groovy thing, yeah? So, let's see, syncopated beat. Let's record that, man. Come on, one, two, three. It's gonna go wrong, man. <laughs> ah! Man. <laughs> oh, wow. This is terrible. Oh my god. Alright, so. Five days later. Alright, Roger Ram, yeah, let's uh, see what we can do now. I'll go to the first, I'll see you then. Boom, boom. Nice, okay. Yeah. Thanks for being patient. I finally got it. Let's filter it down, because this is something I would like to stick a little bit in the background, perhaps, yeah? 
go out of this chromatic mode back to quick mute mode because I want to turn stuff on and off. So we'll go to the filter which is right over here in the middle and then we go. Let's stick that on the, on the crossfader shall we? So we hold the crossfader, we turn it down so it gets blackened out. Turn it down, nothing's happening. Release it and then. Nice. I like it. Okay, now to go for intonation. What I will do is I will see if I can find a bass line. First, I'll stop the beat. That was the beat. Okay, I think something's already there. It's playing, but it's way down in the bottom. Ah, there are my notes, you know, we need to take them out because we are not going to use that. No, go away. Okay, this is going away. So, we're taking out the notes that are playing because I want a clean sequence for you guys to pick up what it's doing. And for this um, What's also nice is that this thing is... I'm not sure why this... Anyway, okay. That wasn't actually stereo, but is now. So I'll play this. Of course there's another note playing. Of course there's another note playing. Where are you? Where are you, note? Are you crazy? I know how to do that. I'll go for babies. on the one. I found you. Found you. Okay. Now, when it comes to um, the tonality of certain stuff, you know, I've only got one. One oscillator that I've got on a square wave. It's a top one and the range is 16th in height. So if you don't know how this thing works, we've got three oscillators right here. Then we've got low, 32, 16. We've got eight, four, and two. And it goes to our LFO rate all the way in the bottom. Okay, so. I'm not going to make it too complicated. I want to stick something of a, shall I say bass line? Yes, let's say bass line. Let's stick a bass line in there, which plays something like bump, 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 bump again on a syncopated rhythm where we go. Let's turn off the piano. Question and answer. Focus on the wah, wah. And we go like Record it. Nice. Now to get like that thing that I was telling you about. Intonation. Yeah? Now, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Throw the kick down. 
Yeah? We've got it. I will stick another sequence of another um, oscillator next to it. But now I am going to detune it a little bit. Because with intonation, when you play a piano, if the piano is tuned correctly, everything is going to stick in the same range. So if you play a C4, C5, C3, 2, or whatever, uh, when it's tuned well, those are the exact same distances in terms of where the frequencies are and where the notes are. But when a guitarist uh, plays on a guitar, he's not hitting the, the fret correctly, or a violinist or a cellist, and they're playing, you know, they can hit that note somewhere else, just not bang spot on. And that means that the intonation makes for a richer sound, even. Uh, when you go even closer into how certain frequencies align, you'll get into psychoacoustics territory. Uh, I don't want to get into that sense, but what I would like to do is in order to, to enrich my sound here, I will stick both of them together. Let's also go for a square wave. And you can hear that this is um, screwing with the fillings in your mouth. So that's a little bit too much. There you go. Stick a little, stick it a little bit. Wow. So now you get a richer sound in terms of where the notes are actually migrating. So which is cool. So what we will do is shorten the notes. And because we've got three oscillators, let's stick the third oscillator on there as well. Also, with this one, we're going to pitch five notes on. Not exactly, but a little bit. And that's why I like dollars. You have to focus on those two things hanging off the side of your head, which are your ears, instead of looking at the screen and pinpointing where exactly it is, you know? And this thing detunes over time as well. Luckily, so everything seems to be alive, yeah? Stick a little bit of noise on there. And how does this relate in the grand scheme of things? You might ask. Well, here we go. And I'm liking this. One, two, three, and... Nice one. I'm gonna so get rid of this piano because I hate it. Okay, get out of there. Bro. Yep. Bear with me here. Almost done. Yeah. So. All the notes are gone. I prefer to do it because sometimes I just de delete the whole uh, track and I don't want to do it. So I want to be safe. Okay, we're going to back to chromatic mode. Just an accent. One, two, three, four. Ah, that's cool. I'll turn it off. Stop it, and then we'll go like... Now we're recording, there we go. Cool, let's see what we have. Now I'm going to shorten the note because I think the note is a little bit on the long side. So get out of there. Double click, enter. Trim. Nice one. I need a little bit of reverb on this track as well. So we'll go over here. Dark verb. 
give it a little bit of space. Nice. Okay, there you go. Can we add more to the equation? Probably. Let's see what we have. Let's see what we got here. Things playing. I don't hear you. Yeah, that's what you want. That's my micro monster right there, I think. Micro monster. Yeah, that's an arpeggio playing. Which we need to tune in the right direction. So we'll go to transpose. Oh, this is nice. Now we're going. Now, this is actually how you can actually just go like, oh, my beat is going in a certain angle, a certain direction. Take out the kick. One, two, three, go. So those are actually uh, ways of getting your groove going. And then you've got different angles to make your track interesting. Obviously now sticking everything together. Discord, that's where you can really get into the vibe and talk to all different people. So I've got tiers laid up through my Patreon page as well. So the more you do, the more you participate, the bigger it is. So you get to listen to demos, you get to like, um, show stuff of your studio. It's really, for me, building a community on Patreon and on Discord to really get going and uh, make sure I'm not the only synth nerd in the world. All right, thanks ever so much for watching. Uh, all the links to the equipment is noted in the fold below. So if you see show more on the page, click more and you'll get all the affiliate links to the gear that I am using. Um, also, uh, Bandcamp is where you can find some of my music. I'm just dropping some stuff over there that I just like jammed on or tracks that I have. I'm just going to um, drop them over there. So uh, you can also try and support the vibe over at Bandcamp. Next week, there's going to be another video. Did I leave anything out? I keep forgetting. Uh, yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. That's what I was going to say. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we're building the five. We're coming up to 4,000 uh, subscribers soon, which to me is like still on um, unreal. You know what I mean? The, the, the channel is growing. Everybody seems to be really finding this vibe. And thanks for all, to all your new subscribers out there. Thank you. I mean, you really make this worth the whole effort of why I, I'm doing it. I love the fact that you like what I'm doing. So you dig that I dig, that you dig that I dig. So, you know what I'm saying? I'll catch you next week on another video. Stay safe. Peace.